In this week's show, we will be discussing the uh, incident that happened a couple of weeks back when a um, black Hebrew Israelite um, man started a conflict in the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, during that two-hour rant that it can be found online, he uh, said all kinds of uh, abusive and mean things, but the, the premise of his um, diatribe was that um, they claim to be the the real Hebrews, and then they they go on and attack different groups for not fulfilling their purpose. Uh, the the point of the show or the the theme of the show is who are the real Hebrews, and we have as our guest uh, a friend of the show, Jay Castro, who's going to be talking about his experience finding out about his crypto Jewish background and how uh, he um, has experienced a connection with Judaism or with the Jewish people. Um, so there was many things that, that this um, representative of the Hebrew Israelite community was saying, and he happens to be from a Latino background like both of us. So it was interesting that he was claiming not only um, that through his African ancestry that he was connected to uh, the original 12 tribes, but he was also uh, disparaging people from a Puerto Rican descent who were not part of his group. Um, Jay and I were discussing, as we were getting ready for the show, how he used um, a chart where he says that um, each group from the original 12 tribes is now a group of people um, of the oppressed people of the Americas. And I found the, the one that he actually was quoting. So he says that uh, Afro-Americans are from the tribe of Judah, that um, people from Guyana and the West Indies are from the tribe of Benjamin. Um, Le Levi is the Haitians. Simeon is the uh, Dominican Republic. Asher is Colombia, Uruguay. Naftali is Argentina and Chile. Joseph is uh, Puerto Rico. Gad is the North American Indians. Reuben is the Seminole Indians. Issachar is Mexico. Sebulon is Guatemala and Panama. And Dan is Cuba. I guess this one's different because during the video he says that Dan is the Native Americans. So he was actually in there to insult and challenge the Native Americans who were having a rally of solidarity. And then a group of white uh, Catholic teenagers got involved and he was insulting them, calling them uh, names. And then uh, one of the Native American activists came in to try to bring some, um, to calm them down and to bring some peace. And he got mistreated by those kids too. So uh, so he was, the guy who started this was uh, some type of provocateur. Um, Jay, you saw some of it too. It was actually a long uh, conversation that he had uh, with different people. And he was trying to convince them of his biblical literalism. Um, what has been your experience uh, finding out about Jewish ancestry and Jewish um, connection, and and where did you fit within the different ways that people claim to to have uh, Hebrew roots? Well, um, <clears throat> within my uh, research and looking into my family um, last name and the history where my family's from, um, the area that my family um, the majority of my my family is from. Um, and along with my more than more than anything, my spirit, spiritual journey <clears throat> and studies, it it, uh, it brought me to the uh, to the the knowledge of uh, me having a Jewish ancestry, and uh, and the, the the thing with that is that it also aligned with my um, my spiritual walk in regards to um, converting to Judaism, and <clears throat> so. But before that. I had a uh, I I don't know if it was through YouTube or or how I came to uh, to the uh, knowledge or the teachings of the Hebrew Israelites, but I believe it was in YouTube. <clears throat> um, I discovered that there was this group called the Hebrew Israelites, um, where they uh, take particular parts of the scripture um, in a literal sense, when it's metaphorical or it's not to, it's not to be taken literal and how they have come to um, their understanding that they are um, the uh, real Hebrew Israelites, that the uh, 
the Jews that we have now in our times are not Jews, um, but that there are converts. Um, um, I believe they call them Kaz, uh, Kazarik or Kazar uh, converts. <laughs> and um, within that, I found that there's actually two groups within. There's many, many uh, fringes in the Hebrew Israelites. Um, one of them where they hold and believe into uh, in the uh, Tanakh, which is the what we what most people consider the Old Testament, so the five books of the Torah, um, and the the prophets, uh, Song of Psalms, and and the, the Book of Psalms, of course, and uh, they and they but they reject the New Testament. They don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, <laughs> and then there's another group that actually believes in, in the uh, Tanakh, the Old Testament, and the New Testament, and believe that um, Jesus um, is the Messiah, um, that he only came for the Hebrew Israelites, um, which they believe are, you know, descendants from uh, um, the, the, uh, uh, blacks or Hispanics, um, Indians, um, and uh, Southern Pacific, from the Southern Pacific Island. <laughs> and um, so from those two groups, they have many other fringes, um, but they they stem from the the uh, taking scripture out of context. A lot of verses that are referring to, um, I believe it's a, more of a metaphor or a spiritual, spiritual teaching. Um, but from that, they gather that uh, they are the, the true Hebrew Israelites. Um, they use passages in regards to um, the Hebrew Israelites being disobedient, um, how they were <clears throat> taken by ships, um, and how they're going to be in, 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 in slave labor. Uh, I can't remember exactly the, the verse to cite it, but they take those verses to to say that you know the African Americans they um, were slaves, they were they were transported by boats, um, and then there's a verse I believe in the Book of Revelation. Um, where it talks about that um, uh, the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, <clears throat> um, has hair white as wool um, and uh, feet um, burning as bronze. And so they take it as that, you know, African Americans have, you know, white hair, their hair looks like wool, and the closest color to burning bronze is, is their skin color. <clears throat> and so... That's where they kind of uh, get their uh, theology in regards to uh, them being the original Hebrew Israelites. They actually reject anybody. And I said African Americans earlier, which is uh, I need to retrace that. They don't believe that Africans or anybody, for example, like from Nigeria, they don't believe that they're a part of the 12 tribes. They believe that they actually were the ones responsible for selling and trading them. Um, as slaves, so they actually they don't they don't hold to the idea that all African Americans or anybody that comes from Africa is considered to be a part of the twelve tribes, <laughs> and they believe also that the Anglo Americans are from the they are from Edom. They consider them to be wicked. That there's no hope for them. There's no salvation for them, and that at one point um, that uh, they will be um, slaves to the uh, to the Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites. One time we had a Hebrew Israelite on our show, and he was a really cool, nice guy. He said that his group wasn't part of the the mainstream um, Hebrew Israelites who you see them on in YouTube. All they do is stand in a corner in New York or Washington, uh, D.C., and insult people. There was a group that was actually uh, throwing curses, and it was like a biblical curse, but they say... A lot of strange words in, in pseudo Hebrew, and then they they just attack you verbally, and then they would say that about uh, white people being enslaved or the women being attacked, or it's just and it's usually these uh, radical young men. And I was hearing uh, in a documentary about um, like fringe groups. Uh, the Southern Southern Poverty Law Center was saying that. People who their life is in chaos, they join some cause to try to make themselves feel better, and and that's what I saw in this uh, video who that became viral is that uh, someone 
tries to prop themselves up by insulting other people and putting them down. And it was offensive on all sides. They were coming after Native Americans saying that the reason that America was taken over by the British and their descendants was because they were pagans worshipping um, statues and animals. And then they went after the the young uh, children about them being part of the Catholic Church and the Catholic Church being corrupt. And then um, that they were um, their skin and their and everything was wrong with them. And uh, in your research regarding this group, did you see anything about them saying that um, Edom, uh, which it was the enemy of, of ancient Israel, is connected to the the Georgia mountains in Russia, and that anybody whose light skin comes from there, so they are the enemies of the 12 tribes. I personally haven't heard the uh, the connection that they make with the Anglo-Americans being uh, a part of Edom or representing Edom. Um, <clears throat> so that's very interesting. I've never heard of that uh, of that claim, um, but they, they they speak they speak of that uh, very very fervently. That's something that they really stick their guns to. Now that's on both sides. So yeah, um, we will have a Hebrew Israelite um, as a possible guest on the show and. She was sharing with me that um, the the Jews that live in the land of Israel at this time they uh, they are part of the the white um, people that they don't like and that um, and I was trying to explain to her that Jews come in many colors and that to make that assumption is racist because you're not only condemning all white people but now you are putting a group that is not considered white by the white nationalists, KKK, and Nazis, you're lumping them with the people that hate them. So, uh, and then she didn't know about the countless number of Sephardic and Mizrahi Jews who live in Israel, who come from the Mediterranean and the Arab nations, who look just like the people in the Middle East. So to make this white generalization that Polish, German, uh, Russian, and other Jews who are light-skinned are part of this evil kingdom who's trying to destroy the black people. It's um, it's like a counter racism that knows no bounds, and it's actually very destructive um, because it's they're doing the thing that that uh, we as minorities have been fighting against all these years is for people not to be generalized or hated by the color of their skin, and in a sense that's what they're doing. But on the other side. And uh, it's, it's very disturbing because uh, at a time where um, there's a lot of hatred that is coming from um, dismissing people and not being willing to understand them, um, that, that that would be the thing to focus on. The gentleman who who was um, yelling expletives and insults at the different um, protesters uh, he kept on saying things that um, some of them have like an emotional appeal that, you know, the minorities have been oppressed and uh, minorities um, are misjudged by the, the majority populace and stuff like that. But then in the midst of it, there was a lot of very uh, ignorant and offensive statements which cannot be justified. So it was like a mixture of righteous indignation and good points. And then a lot of um, very outlandish statements. What do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with you. They have they have bits of truth in their message, um, but it, it, it gets washed down with uh, the hateful rhetoric of uh, you know the scriptures being taken out of context. And you know, so I, I agree with you. And 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 I think that's why they're they are uh, drawing a lot of attention, and they're. I don't want to say they're growing, but they are expanding. Um, they're not growing as, as um, you know, in, in a way where, you know, they're taking over, <clears throat> you know, uh, other groups or anything like that, but they are growing in numbers. Um, but uh, the, the, uh, the thing that I think that they're using to, to draw people is they do speak a lot of about uh, injustice, about... Uh, you know, people being oppressed, 
um, you know, which a lot of people would agree on, especially with the <clears throat> with everything that's going on right now in the, in the past couple of years with um, a lot of the protests, with with you know the, uh, the violence of you know for the police officers and and African Americans, and so it's 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 there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of uh, hurt that's going on. And so they they use that um, to, uh, to to you know to appeal to people to appeal to minorities, um, and uh, and so I I think that's where their that's one of their uh, strong points is they, they're using the injustice they're using um, a lot of the things that are going on in the group, in the minority groups um, to get people's attention, and so they mix a lot of truth they mix they mix truth with uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, hateful rhetoric. Um, that that is taken out of context, and and it's not about um, misjudging or dismissing people because you don't like what they're saying. Is because uh, some of the basic facts um, that they were trying to propose are, are incorrect. Like he, they were talking about uh, history, and the only thing that they said about history that was correct is that during the destruction of the temple in the first century. Uh, 50,000 Jews fled to Africa. But if you look into it, they fled to Alexandria, Egypt, that at that time, the people that lived in that area were different from people from Central Africa. And there was, um, the Roman Empire had taken over that land, and even uh, Cleopatra was not uh, an original Egyptian. She was from Macedonia, uh, a segment of Greece. So there was people from all different shades and all different cultures who lived in Alexandria, Egypt, and there was a huge Jewish population there. So this idea that um, they, if they go down the line claiming that every single biblical character was uh, was African or what is considered, I don't like to judge people by the color of their skin or to separate groups among colors. So, you know, one of their issues is that, you know, nobody's really black and nobody's really white. And it's like, okay, Fine, if we're going to do colors, then people are either dark brown or they're pinkish, um, pale, or whatever. But um, they're claiming that all the biblical heroes and characters are from their ethnic group. And and maybe they were, I don't know. Like, when it's all said and done, they put as much emphasis on the melanin or uh, in your skin as other groups do. And I think that's part of the... The, we talked about it in our show regarding uh, Latin history that um, the Spaniards and now even the Darwinian scientists uh, have categorized people based on features, which is actually very destructive because then uh, people of mixed race or people who do not fit their categories are left in a in a bad place, and then people are judged based on not their their intellect or their abilities are judged on stereotypes and ridiculous assumptions. So they're doing the same thing and then but their premise is mostly emotional and spiritual. It's not even um historical or scientific in any way. Uh, so it's really hard to debate someone who's using um biblical uh language and verses uh, and trying to prove a point uh, based on their interpretation because you're pretty much, in their eyes, you're fighting with God. You're not fighting with their particular view of what the the Word of God says. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I agree with that as well. They, uh, <clears throat> one of the things that they use is the, the horrendous acts that the um, African Americans went through here in the United States with slavery, um, fighting oppression, and how the so they, they they add that to their to their rhetoric in regards to that the white man you know was uh, their uh, were slave owners they were um, you know mistreating slaves mistreating people and 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 a, and a very um, just treating people in a very w- wicked way. So that, that a lot of it, a lot of that fuels um, their ideology, 
Um, and they use, of course, some verses in the Bible out of context in regards to um, them being, you know, uh, shipped and, and, and boats and ships and traded and sold as slaves. And <clears throat> so they, they, uh, they use a lot of, they use some truth, like I mentioned earlier, um, but they mix it with uh, a lot of other um, ideas that um, are really far-fetched and, and Again, you know, they uh, pull that from uh, um, a lot of scriptures that they take out of context. So, yeah, I, I, uh, that's one of the things that I, that I see a lot is they, they, they feed on um, the injustice that's going on right now um, and the things that, they're, that you know, minorities are having to go through um, along with what happened in the <clears throat> with slave trade and, and leading up to the civil rights and um, and even till now, so they use a lot of that, which I believe there's a lot of people that um, are holding, you know, they have either grudges or have hate in their heart or they're um, probably in pain or confused in regards to the things that happened um, to, uh, to to preach their their hateful message. But let, let's get to the point of the show. So, um, you know, we are part of a movement of Latinos who are claiming Jewish ancestry and is based on um, inquisitional records, on migration patterns, on family histories and um, traditions. It's based on the struggle of uh, people in Latin America uh, who were of Jewish descent and how they survived barely through the midst of, of ongoing persecution. Uh, couldn't people say the same thing about us, that we are claiming to be Hebrews or Israelites or Jews uh, with a, a very thin um, basis? Um, and and it's, it goes back to interpretation. Some people might accept us, some people might not. So how isn't what they're doing appropriating Judaism and ancient uh, Israelite religion just another form of supersessionism where we've seen it through uh, the Catholic, the Protestants, uh, even Islam at certain points where they're, uh, they're taking Jewish ideas and they're um, reclaiming them for themselves. But they, the, this group is claiming like a genetic uh, descendancy. So it's not even in spiritual terms like um, a traditional Christianity. Uh, now it's like they're the actual physical uh, descendants of the tribe of Judah as compared to anybody else who might make that claim. Well, the thing with that is, <clears throat> in regards to my case, uh, with my situation and many others, um, the, the idea that I, what, what I believe it's actually, it can be traced through history, it can be traced through ancestry, um, and even if you, if you, you know, if you look at it through, through, uh, through a map and, 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 you know, you can, you can trace everything down to where, um, everything back to, um, to Israel in regards to the Jews that live in Spain. <clears throat> and I've met some that actually don't, that don't know that, um, that, uh, you know, the Hispanics or Latinos, um, were actually, you can, you can trace them down. Um, through the Sephardic lineage, um, Sephardic ancestry, back to Israel. And one of the things that I've seen is also is that they use a lot of the information in regards to Ethiopian Jews. They use a lot of images of, um, you know, uh, dark-skinned, colored people um, wearing tzitzits, wearing the tallits, wearing flatteries. They use that to add, to add to their theology in regards to, you know, African-Americans or dark-skinned people being the uh, true Hebrews, Israelites. Um, but they don't have a, a direct connection in regards to history um, that follows and that trace them back to the land of Israel. Whereas in our point, in my case and in others, um, if we are thorough and diligent in tracing back our ancestor and lineage, we can trace it back from, from Mexico to Spain, um, all the way back to um, Israel, and there's archaeological evidence. Um, history also proves that. 
Um, but in their case, they have a huge gaps of history that's missing to prove that their point is, is true. <clears throat> and they, one of the things that they like to throw in there is that um, because of ours, which they call um, our brothers who are Jewish, um, had something to do with wiping that history, um, changing the, the, the colors through art, and making the, the Jewish people with, a, with light skin or fair skin or brown skin and not um, depicting the true color of the Hebrew Israelites. So they, they have a huge gap of history that they don't have, that, uh, that they can't use, because it's not there. Where in, in my case, um, I can trace my family from Mexico to Spain um, back to Israel. So we have, you know, that, that evidence that, you know, that uh, can actually point back to Israel. Where in their case, they don't. And, Where in their case, they don't. And one thing, going back to, you know, propping yourself up by tearing someone down, is that they, they're using the same tactics as other anti-Semites, by saying that the Jewish people are not a legitimate group. So this idea that the the Jews are the Edomites, uh, it's, it's like the only way that they can make a case is to disprove the historical Jewish people, and then they don't accept any of the Jewish markers that are part of, of Judaism. So in Judaism, it's, it's a, a ethnic... Uh, it's a religious ethnic civilization, so it has uh, rituals and processes to become a member of that of the group. Uh, it's almost it's like a nation, and then there's uh, also um, a genetic or, or descendant component, and then there's um, there's the, the ethnic and cultural um, milieu that, that the Jewish people are part of. So this is a, a a civilization that has existed for thousands of years and and people throughout the centuries have come up and try to displace them or to claim that their legitimacy is not there but Judaism uh, it, it has been bringing in new converts and new blood throughout the centuries so there's Jews from all different types of um, backgrounds and walks of life and, and looks but they this group in particular tries to attack the um, the mainstream uh, Jewish community, in a similar way, the Nation of Islam, the the white supremacists, they even use the same conspiracy theories to try and knock down the Jewish people, and that's the most disturbing part of it. It's like if you claim to be the original Hebrews, then you would at least want to say that um, there is some Jewish connection, even if. You know, there was multiple sectarian groups in the time of Jesus, and they they try to knock each other down. Uh, but there was never the sense of, like, you guys were never Jews to begin with. Uh, so these guys are saying that the Jews were never Jews to begin with, and that they are the right ones. But they don't have any of the cultural or traditions or markers that make Judaism what it is, and that connects it with ancient Israelite religion. So now it's like a it's a new movement that is made from thin air to try to disprove a group who's that's been there all along. Uh, so that's what's very problematic. Where um, you're taking uh, traditions, ideas, concepts, and you're twisting them and turning them around to use them against a group of people who have been dying for their faith through the centuries so it's just unbelievable yeah they <clears throat> yeah it's um another thing too is they they um and the, anything that the uh anything that ties the jewish people back to being the being jews and being the people of, of the bible um they discredit um some of them don't believe that the holocaust even happened um of course, there are some that do, but and a large part of the of, of the Hebrew Israelites um, believe that the um, that the Jews uh, never went through the Holocaust, and and uh, they they focus a lot on the um, a lot of the uh, parts in the Bible where where it refers to um, you know 
God, Hashem, um, dispersing the, the 12 tribes of Israel um, because of their disobedience. And, and so it, it, it uh, they, again, they just, they, <clears throat> they have huge gaps of history, not only culture, they have huge gaps of, uh, well, they don't have anything that ties them back to um, ancient Israel. They don't have any practices. Um, they, they dress different. Um, their Hebrew is even different from one, one group to another. They pronounce names different from one group to another. <clears throat> they have different ways of observe, observing um, some of the feasts um, that are given uh, in the Bible. Some of them even wear the Zetites the, uh, in a different manner. They call them fringes. Um, so they have their own, um, their own ways of, of observing Torah, and uh, they don't have any consistency, and one group differs from another because they don't have any connection back to modern Israel, um, the, you know, the true Israel, the, the Jews, they don't have any connection to the Torah uh, in regards to observance or practices or traditions. Um, so they're left, um, just like other groups as well, they're left with their own um, ideas and their own um, ways of uh, observing some of the uh, feasts and the commandments that Hashem has given us. Whereas the Jews, um, have been preserving not only scripture, um, but tradition and ways of, uh, also in ways of keeping the mitzvah, the commandments. Um, but they disregard all of that <clears throat> because of their hateful rhetoric. Um, and they're left with, they're, they're, they're pretty much, they're left with, they're left with nothing. They don't have any, any history that ties them back, um, to Israel. They don't have anything that ties them back to, the practices or traditions, like you mentioned earlier, I um, mean, you can see that it's real evident in their um, in their movement within the different fringes and different groups that, that are within the uh, Hebrew Israelites. So it's a lot of confusion. <clears throat> One thing that they're known for, um, that they're very popular, is they debate each other. Um, they one group will debate another group. Um, if one is um, in the streets preaching, they're real famous and uh, showing up and preaching against that group. Um, so there's a lot of confusion within that group. Um, it's, 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 very, it's, very, it's very disheartening. Um, but there are some people that are, you know, that are joining the group and um, that are becoming zealous in that movement. Um, and that is, that, is, that is one of the disheartening things to see. Well, our job on the show is not to attack any particular group or to... Um, create more uh, division and conflict. Our job is to educate people on what's going on. So I would like to go back into um, not only is um, the social upheavals and movements from the 60s that have brought about this type of um, religious uh, community, but it's also, to me, it seems like it's a derivative of um, the pro-Jewish or Hebrew roots craze that has taken over the evangelical Christian movement, and we can talk a little bit about how um, you know there's different versions of what happened. But in the um, in the seventies, there was uh, outreach done to convert Jews to uh, to Christianity, and that became the the Messianic movement. And then out of that, there was people who did not feel comfortable with Judaism, so they came up with a different term, Hebrew roots, where they talk about the Hebrew roots originally was finding out about the Jewish Jesus and finding out about the Bible more, and then it became people claiming Jewish um, ancestry or connection through different conspiracy theories, such as the, uh, the, the what is it, the, the two sticks or the um, the two house theory, and then there's the uh, sacred name uh, community where they feel that the followers of Jesus automatically become Israelites and other groups like that where um, again it's like supersessionism or theological uh, um, gymnastics to try to prove that they have some special connection or they're the chosen uh, uh, remnant who have a more real Jewish connection and they have a lot of hatred and disdain to the rabbinical system and traditional Jewish ideas. So they come up with their own biblical interpretations. 
and now it seems like that has been taken over by some type of um, black nationalism and I respect black nationalism um, for their interest in being independent from the majority population having the opportunity to create their own uh, businesses and and community efforts so but to me this seems like a corruption of of that and and now is turned into this conflictive thing that I've seen a lot within these evangelical groups where uh, there's just this sense of um, uh, superiority to anybody else that doesn't agree with them and then there's the big evangelistic aspect where they're trying to convince everybody to join their ranks so uh, the gentleman that we see on the video he's he's Puerto Rican and the Puerto Rican people have been oppressed and, and been through a lot so I can see how he is looking to uh, to be a representative of something greater and again um, we admire his passion and his desire to uh, to kind of challenge people, but when does uh, that type of religious fervor become destructive and um, and conflictive to the point of of creating um, very isolated groups that um, that are really um, making up a religion as they go? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I agree with you now. So let, let's go through the outrageous claims. Um, he's he was saying that uh, the Jesus that uh, is often depicted in art is an effeminate Jesus. That the Jesus that he believes in is uh, the Jesus of the Book of Revelation, who's going to come and destroy everything and everyone. And we had uh, John Dominic Rosan, uh, an expert on the New Testament, a historian, say that. Um, he has to wrestle with the Jesus of the book of Revelation because it's not the meek and mild Jesus, a Jesus who's a warrior. And this relates to Jewish theology where God is depicted as, as a warrior fighting against the enemies of Israel. So um, he, I guess in this sense, the this one uh, preacher from the Hebrew Israelite community, he's being consistent that there is a, a vision of Jesus that is very disturbing to modern uh, audiences because he's one who brings judgment and and destruction as he's trying to vindicate his followers um, what do you think about his idea that the blonde meek and mild Jesus is um, misrepresentation of the I kind of I, I don't agree with their, their view on it um, I don't agree in the the depiction in the image um, <clears throat> but uh, I think they, they uh, like, and, and and that's what I was, you know, that goes back to, you know, them having a little bit of truth in their message, and they have that in almost every point um, that they speak of. Um, I think the the what he's referring to is he's he's attaching the uh, modern view of Christianity um, in regards to a. <clears throat> a loving Jesus, a forgiving Jesus. Um, you know, in a sense, I, I, I do agree with him um, that uh, he has been in recent years um, with the, with this teaching of grace and, and everything that comes with it in, in modern Christianity, um, that they do um, make a, a very effeminate Jesus and, and they kind of, um, and I believe that when they get to the point where um, you know, where Revelations, you know, speaks of uh, Jesus, Yeshua, um, coming down to bring judgment, they have problems connect, they have problems with that connection um, because they don't, they miss the, the, uh, the uh, times when, when Jesus was very harsh, where he was very straightforward um, in regards to some of his messages. <clears throat> so again, in that area, I, I do agree with, with, uh, the, the depiction of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus that people are teaching now, um, that they have made them in a sense of a, a effeminate, uh, uh, you know, savior, um, almost as a, you know, almost hippie-like. Um, and, and so they use, you know, some, some truth or some, you know, they use something that a lot of people can agree on um, to twist it back into their ideology. So 
you know, and, and that's the thing too is that, <clears throat> and I've noticed that in a lot of their teachings, um, where they do they uh, they do speak some truth, but then they mix it in with all this other rhetoric. Then um, I'm just still baffled with this idea that um, Anglo Americans or people of European descent are innately um, evil. Because I, I've challenged both um, a Rastafarian guest and a Hebrew Israelite guest regarding that. And to me, it's just, you know, I'm not going to tolerate, e even if a group of people might be misbehaving or there's a portion of them that are um, think they're better than you or something like that, it is um, unspeakable to just condemn a group of people and to you know, what about women and children and, you know, nice white people? Like, there's there's a lot of white people who who died uh, protecting African Americans during the Civil Rights Movement. There was white people who um, have passed laws to benefit minorities. Um, they're, they're just, on, like, the liberals and, and some conservatives who love... Uh, people from all races, especially people who are religious, who genuinely religious, feel that, you know, we're all God's children and stuff like that. So, it, you know, it it breaks my heart to hear that someone can can um, have that type of disdain for any group of people. So, um, how, how, like, I can't even fathom just saying, well, you know, they're all condemned, like, have you talked to them? Have you given them a chance? Have you tried to understand why certain white people might feel threatened with minorities? Like, it, it just seems like a, to be like a gut reaction to just uh, dismiss um, a lot of people. And, it's, and that's some of the issues that we see with other movements where they don't even... They're so entrenched in in their group, and they only deal with people who look like them. They're not willing to build bridges and understand other folks. So, I don't know, uh, Jay. Do you have any thoughts on this? No, I, I I'm uh, I honestly don't don't uh, I can't wrap my my head around uh, their views in regards to um, people that are Anglo Americans or. Even African Americans, uh, they 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 uh, have uh, um, what you know. What where I would say that you know that they're, they're people, or they come from that nation, <clears throat> but they have a disdain against them as well. They have a hatred towards them. Um, I've even heard a uh, there was a debate with a Nigerian and a um, a, a Hebrew Israelite. And he was telling him, he was like, you know, you you came from Africa, um, you know, you were traded or, you know, you were brought over here to America, but uh, you come from Africa, which is a country that I'm from, and, um, and you have hatred towards us, you have hatred towards your own people. <coughs> and to me, that was very profound, because <coughs> even when it's... When it's real plain to see, their hatred blinds them where they don't see that, you know, they're actually hating their own people. And they're feeding into this hatred that uh, has brought all this injustice, injustice towards them. They are feeding into that same hatred. Um, they, uh, they feel strongly, um, I don't know if they feel strongly against African Americans as they do with the Anglo-Americans. Um, but, uh, they, they don't, they don't think that they're a part of the 12 tribes of Israel. They blame the African Americans for trading and for, um, selling them as slaves. Um, but it was a very interesting debate. Um, and the Hebrew Israelite, of course, he was sticking to his guns and the, the, uh, um, the African American gentleman, um, who was from, I don't remember exactly where he was from in Africa, but. Um, he was just confused, and he couldn't. Under, he he didn't understand how how they were able to come up with such I ideas, and how they're able to hate their own people. Um, so no, I, I I'm confused. I'm baffled. I don't understand 
you know, how they can, uh, you know, stand firm to something that, that uh, honestly doesn't make any sense. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's very, it's confusing. Well, the other sad thing is that they're using the Bible to justify their hatred. And, you know, at times I thought that maybe the Bible should be kept in, with lock and key because um, it can be uh, twisted or interpreted in a way that it is um, destructive or even violent. But it has to do with the context and the situation. So... We know that the Europeans used the Bible to judge the, the Native Americans and the Native uh, Central and South Americans as, as pagans, as, as idolaters, and they used that as a justification for their destruction of, of their sacred sites and building churches and stuff like that. Now you have people using the same biblical verses to claim that everybody else is paganized and worshiping idols and they are the only ones serving God properly. And it's just, um, it goes back to, if you were to take the scriptures of any group of people and and appropriate them and apply them to yourself, you can build a religion that would, um, you can use Hinduism against Indians or use, um, you know, the Mayan religion against the Mayans. If you came with no understanding and try to apply their battles and their uh, inner conflict to you to your modern situation and that's what they're doing so uh, they can quote bibles uh, passages all day long and and condemn people but you know there's many people they would tell you that the bible is actually uh, a book of of principles and and positivity and hope and, and kindness. So to only focus on curses and attacks and insults and judgment seems to be a very narrow uh, reading and a very convenient reading, which uh, again only props them up as holier than thou and everybody else as enemies of God. And it just seems like um, it's just a basic misunderstanding of the purpose of scripture and uh, and and what was going on in, in those time periods. So um, again, like, why don't they write their own scriptures and create their own um, theological constructs, and then we can have a, a, a debate regarding which reality is true and which one is not. But to take the the scriptures of a, another group of people and and use it to attack them and attack everyone else and to use racial superiority uh, theories and stuff like that seems so um, such a misplaced um, you know sense of of um, and entitlement and and recreating a, a religion to fit your purposes that um, you know it's, it's almost uh, it's not out of the ordinary because there's been many groups who have done that in the past. But it is very uh, sad and and discouraging that, that that's to the extent that people can go. Well, the the uh, ironic thing about that is uh, the reason why they even have scriptures, the reason why they even have a Bible, is because the Jews, uh, who they don't consider to be Jewish or who they don't consider to be the, the real Hebrew Israelites, um, they actually preserve. The Torah scrolls, they preserve the, 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 the scriptures, uh, they preserve traditions. And uh, it's funny because uh, the Jews did all this work, and like other groups um, that believe different than the Hebrew Israelites, they, they use the, uh, the scriptures that the Jews pre uh, preserve, and they use it against them, um, which is... Uh, you know, that's just, that's just something that's very hard to wrap my mind around. Um, so they, they were, you know, they were good enough to preserve the scriptures. They trust the scriptures. They trust that this did happen and that, um, that God has preserved these scriptures for us to have. But they forget about the people who died to preserve the scriptures, who gave their lives and their families' lives um, to preserve the, the Torah scrolls. 
um, to preserve the integrity of the of the scripture, and, and uh, this is very uh, it's just it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that idea, and, and that's the you know they they have no other choice but to do that because they don't have that connection to the scriptures, they don't have that connection to um, to Israel. So, uh, in the last ten minutes of our show. Um, Let's talk about our experience or your experience. Um, one one of the issues that the Hebrew roots or Messianic movement would bring up is that um, Judaism is a closed system that you can't just become a Jew uh, because you love God or you want to follow his principles. You have to be part of the Jewish community or become a member. Uh, and in a sense, what all these groups have in common, including the black Hebrew Israelites, is that they uh, tag your it, like you can just become uh, an Israelite by your faith. That is not a, a legal process like in Judaism. Uh, what do you see as attractive and problematic with those type of perspectives? It's uh, anybody can be a chief. Um, anybody can be, you know, just by you feeling it, thinking it, believing it, you're it. Um, the, the problem with that is that you can easily fall off of that ideology and go into another um, just because there's no substance, there's no order, um, there's no tradition, uh, it's something new. Um, so the, that's that's the, the problematic thing about it. I honestly don't know if I could find something. Uh, well, the, the thing that I could see positive on their side is that they're accepted into a group that's uh, fighting for justice. Okay, that's that's the only the only thing that I can say that's that's probably positive out of that group is that people are finding a community, um, people are finding a place where it, where it's supposedly grounded in scripture, um, and it's also you know I'm fighting for retribution, fighting for and you know for justice um, in regards to minorities going through you know the things that they're going through. So. <clears throat> That's the only positive thing that I can see in it. Uh, in regards to, you know, this idea that you can just, you know, believe these words that someone's telling you and just, you know, out of nowhere, you can just be a part of that group um, that has no history, that has no foundation, that has no order. Um, I, I see that as very problematic. But what has been the challenge for you as reclaiming your Jewish ancestry and what has been the process like in, in the ongoing uh, learning and re relearning of what it takes to, to become a, a member of, of the Jewish people? In retrospect, it's, it's, it's been, uh, it's very, uh, uh, it's been life-changing. Uh, there's a lot of uh, ideas, <clears throat> a lot of beliefs that, uh, um, that I've come to, to test with, uh, with Scripture and with the proper context that, that Judaism offers. Um, and, you know, there's been a lot of rewiring, rethinking, um, the way of life is different. Um, you know, it's, it's a very, it's a life that demands a lot of discipline, a lot of, uh, self-reflection. Um, and honestly, that's been one of the biggest things. Uh, I, I came, I was a, a Christian for, um, about two and a half, three years <clears throat> from that. I was, uh. Uh, I say this jokingly, but it's it's true. I was a Hebrew Israelite for a couple of months, um, then I was in Messianic Judaism, and uh, none of those groups offered anything tangible. Um, there was always this, there was this always this, this blame put on, uh, on the devil and Satan, almost in a uh, idolatrous um, thinking where you know the devil has power and he's just attacking you and um, and Judaism rewired and rechanged me and that they changed my way of, of looking at things and, and has helped me as a person to reflect and, you know, within myself and reflect in my, you know, the issues, the underlying issues that I have that I need to work on in regards to, you know, guarding my heart, my eyes and my mind. <clears throat> but more, more than anything is I wasn't raised Jewish. My family is not, you know, they weren't raised Jewish either. Um, they're, you know, most of my family members are Christian. They don't um, necessarily agree <clears throat> with uh, 
they don't agree with my with my beliefs, but they respect it because they they know the life that I had before. Um, I'm only going you know going on six years and uh, following God and, and trying to live righteous and holy. And I'm 34 years old, so they know you know where I came from and the life that I had. So they have some respect in regards to that. Um, but it's it's been difficult in regards of just you know the ideas that I was holding on to that I believed in, rechanging those. And uh, just putting the focus back um, on me as a person to improve myself, to be a better person, um, to to live a righteous life, to live a holy life. Um, and uh, in regards to, you know, uh, I don't see any problems um, within the Jewish community. Um, there are some people that believe different. There's some people that um, are not used to, you know, having a mixed um, culture within their um, group or, or system, but there are others that are. So I've never, it's never been anything that I've had to, anything bad or anything negative in regards to um, joining the, the Jewish people or reclaiming my Jewish roots. Um, but it's been more on uh, myself um, and uh, just rewiring and, and being patient with myself and um, understanding that I wasn't, you know, raised Jewish, so it's going to take time for me to to get the proper knowledge and understanding and, and uh, then to be able to apply it to my life. I am a single father. Um, my son wasn't raised Jewish um, as well. <clears throat> so, you know, teaching him, knowing what to teach him and how much to teach him and to be patient with him and to be merciful. And um, that's also been, uh, um, you know, something that's, that I've, uh, that I've been working on and um, something that I've, you know, um, I guess you can say uh, I've struggled with in a sense, but um, other than that, I've, I, uh, it's just been just having to rewire and rethink my views and, and my ideologies. So you would say the education is an important component in, in reclaiming your Jewish ancestry? Education is everything. Education, understanding, and knowledge. <clears throat> I The idea that I was once a street preacher, and, and a lot of the, uh, there was a lot of just reaction, a lot of doing, with not really having the, the, the full understanding. So when I came to, um, the under, when I came to discover, you know, Torah, and, and that, you know, Hashem wants us to keep the mitzvah, the commandments, um, I was very zealous, um, so I was uh, very quick to uh, start applying these um, new ideas into my life. At that point, I was married and I had a family um, of four. Um, three of the kids were my wife's kids from a previous marriage that I adopted um, as mine. Um, but uh, that was one of my biggest problems is the, this idea of, um, you know, we have to repent now, that repentance is today, that we have to stop now. And and so I, in that, I, in that mindset, I wanted to apply a lot of the commandments without the understanding, uh, without even understanding the context behind it um, and everything that goes into it, which was very problematic in my life. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just, you know, and, and my story or, you know, my story is similar to others. I've spoken to a lot of people uh, who've had the same issues, um, the same problems in regards to coming into Torah observance or Messianic Judaism, what have you, whatever you want to call it, is the the lack of education um, because we believe that so there's this there's this idea that you know every person is their own priest every person is their own every person has the Holy Spirit and um, they're led they're led by the Holy Spirit um, as as you know the Holy Spirit sees fit and they justify their zealousness and the practice of of mitzvot or commandments um, as such because they. You know, they have the Holy Spirit and they're led by the Holy Spirit. Where in fact, you know, I believe that we, what's, what's lacking is the, not only the education, but understanding in regards to uh, the application of the commandments. Okay, Jay, well, we're going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for coming on the show and helping us um, address th this difficult issue. We will have other guests who will look at it from different angles. And uh, hopefully by the end of the series, we can be more uh, understanding and willing to uh, hear people out, but but especially that we can also uh, 
challenge the people who are challenging us with some uh, critical thinking to get us to a better place. So thanks again for being on the show, Jay. Um, 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 on the show, Jay. Um,